Think about this. 39 of the last 40 years, the California Democrats have controlled the state legislature. If you don't like having the nation's highest taxes, where we pay the highest income tax, the highest sales tax, among the highest gas taxes, and among the highest corporate taxes in the United States, if you don't like living in a state that has the highest poverty rate in the nation, with more homeless people than any other state. By the way, anybody see some homeless people here in the last week, anywhere in this area? They're all over, right? Were they there 10 years ago? Were they there 20 years ago? But you know what? Thanks to eight years of Jerry Brown, which is actually just a continuation of before, this is Jerry Brown's fourth term in office. Jerry Brown and his dad have run this state for 24 of the last 50 years. The California Democrats have run the legislature for 39 of the last 50 years. They have taken our state, which used to be the greatest state in the nation, with the best roads, the best schools, the best water system, and they have dragged us down into the ground. I will tell you, it's about time we take it back from them, bring balance to California, and take back our state. Highest in the nation poverty, where one in five Californians lives below the poverty line. And why? Because their jobs have left, the companies have left. Why does my brother no longer work here or live here? Because the job that he worked at with Raytheon used to be in El Segundo, California. Now it's in Tucson, Arizona. My folks want to build a house right here on the coast, but Carmel was too expensive, so they're on the Southern Oregon coast. When my clients and their companies left, they left because there was better taxes, lower cost of living, less crime in other places. And when those companies left, they took all those jobs with them. They took all those workers with them. In the last seven years alone, we've lost 243,000 Californians on balance. They've taken over $8 billion with them. Think about this. The city of San Francisco, this is the city of Gavin Newsom, the former mayor. Sleazy Gavin. More people have left San Francisco than any other city in the United States. And why? Because there's 22,000 intravenous drug users on the streets. They're going to open up legalized heroin injection centers. It is so bad you have maps of human waste so you know which, which streets you can walk on. And when kids are walking to elementary school, they have to walk around the hypodermic needles. It is terrible. Plus, nobody can afford to live there anyway. Think about this. Do we want California to look like San Francisco? Do we want open borders in California? Do we want people who are not even here legally voting in our state? Are you with me when I say we got to secure our borders and enforce federal immigration law? Are you with me when I tell you in my first 100 days as your next governor of California, we will reverse the illegal sanctuary state? Jerry Brown signs the illegal sanctuary state law. I go on Tucker Carlson three months ago. Anybody here watch Fox News, little fair mouse? There we go. I'm on Tucker in January. I say, Tucker, look, Jerry Brown signed this illegal sanctuary state law. It is unconstitutional. It says that if you're in this state illegally and you are committing crimes, you will now be sheltered with taxpayer dollars. That is illegal. It is unconstitutional. Jeff Sessions and the Department of Justice got to come to California and sue California. And you know what? What did everybody say? Oh, there goes Travis. He's crazy. What is he talking about? This is not possible. Well, I am very pleased to report that just two weeks ago, Jeff Sessions came to California and they're suing California. But you know what? You see, unfortunately, they took their time doing it. And what happens? You've heard that justice delayed is justice denied. What happens when you don't get the bad guys when they start doing bad things? They get worse. So then we get Javier Becerra, the criminal attorney general of California. He tells California business owners, anybody own a business here in California? Anybody work for a business here in California? Right? Think about this. He tells every California business owner that if you cooperate with federal immigration law, and federal immigration authorities doing their constitutional duty. He will prosecute you. Think about this. That is criminal obstruction of justice. 
We got to arrest Javier Becerra and prosecute him. And you know what? It doesn't stop there because nobody did that yet, right? He's still running around suing Trump for everything he wants to. So what happens? Then you get the Democrat mayor of Oakland, Libby Schaff. She gets a call from ICE, and they say they're going to apprehend about 800 criminals in her community. She picks up the phone, calls her media, and tells all of these criminals that ICE is coming, that you better start hiding. Because she criminally aided and abetted these criminals, over 600 of them are still wandering the streets. They only apprehended about 200 of them. Think about this. Three of those criminals have already re-offended now, including robbery and spousal abuse. Oakland Mayor, Oakland Democrat, Libby Schaaf, is guilty of aiding and abetting criminals. Over 800 counts. Those are felonies. Libby Schaaf is now guilty of being an accessory to a crime. Over three of them. It is time we arrest and prosecute Libby Schaaf. Gavin Newsom, the guy that's going to run against me, because he thinks he's going to be governor, but I'll tell you right now, Gavin Newsom, the best job you're ever going to have is Mayor of San Francisco, Lieutenant Governor, and that's it. You're done in California. No more for Gavin Newsom. He is now encouraging Democrat officials throughout the state to violate federal immigration law because, you see, no one's standing up and no one's stopping them. Just yesterday, I put a petition on our Facebook site. Anybody here following me on Facebook, on social media, at Joy Travis Allen? Anybody going to follow me at Joy Travis Allen on social media? There we go. 450,000 followers reaching 4.5 million people on a good week. Just yesterday, I put up a petition. Tiny Los Alamitos in my district, in Orange County, just told Jerry Brown in California, we are opting out. We will no longer be a sanctuary state. So I put up a petition. If you live in California and you want to tell your city council to opt out of the sanctuary state, go to jointravisallen.com. Go to Joint Travis Allen on Facebook. You sign that petition, and I will mail letters to your city council saying that you live in their city and you want to observe federal immigration law, get criminals out of your communities that are shooting not be here in the first place, and reverse the illegal sanctuary state policy. As of last check, we had almost 20,000 signatures from across California, and we are just getting started. So think about this. California's got some serious problems. And why? We have been run by the wrong political party for years. What happens with six decades of unlimited Democrat control? Detroit, Michigan. Once the fourth largest city, fourth greatest city in the United States, Motor City. They made everybody's cars for the United States and for around the world. But you know what? For six decades, Democrats have run the city. Not one Republican was elected in that city for six decades. You can now buy a home for a dollar. It is a black hole of the city. It is so bad, no one lives there. You can farm in the middle of the downtown area because there's nobody left. The Democrats have run California for 39 of the last 40 years. I'll tell you right now, California will not look like Detroit. We're kicking them out. This is the year we take back our state. Raise your hand if in 2016 you voted for the Republican nominee for president, Donald J. Trump. There is only one candidate in the entire race for governor that voted for, supported, and even wrote op-eds in favor of the Republican nominee for president, Donald J. Trump. Think about this. In 2016, what happened? We took back our country. It's time we make America great again. And remember, they said we couldn't do it, right? Raise your hand if you know a Democrat. Who here knows a Democrat? There we go. Come on, everybody knows a Democrat. They're your neighbors. They're your co-workers. They're in your family. That's why Christmas is so much fun. Think about this. In 2016, you probably had a conversation with them. And it sounded something like this. You know, I think this guy, Donald J. Trump, has got a real chance to win the presidency. And then your Democrat friend says, you are crazy. There is no way that will ever happen. 
Look at all the polls. Look at all the mainstream media. There is no way this guy's got zero chance to win. Anybody have this conversation? There we go. We all did, right? Were they right? Were they right? Were they wrong? Were those polls right? Was the media right? Were we right? Who is our president of the United States of America? Trump! They said we couldn't win in 2016. They're saying we can't win in 2018. What is the name of your next governor of the state of California? You better believe it is. It's Travis Allen. And I'll tell you why. In 2014, Jerry Brown got elected in California. He got 4.3 million votes to be the next governor. 4.3. In 2016, Donald Trump just got 4.4 million votes in California. Think about it. All we got to do is turn out the Trump voters, and Travis Allen will be your next governor of California. That's all we got to do, guys. Only knows it. Only, only let me see that shirt you got on. Let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see the back. Come on, let's see the back. Look at that. Yeah. By the way, everybody should have an envelope in front of them. Anybody got an envelope in front of them? Hold it up. Who's got them? Oh, we got them here. Do we got them up there? They're, they're coming. Hey, they're, hey, uh, hold it up. I want to see these envelopes. Hold up. Wave them around if we got them. All right. Every, I know you guys all donated today. Oh, look at that. I even signed that shirt for you. Every donation today gets another Travis Allen t-shirt. Every extra donation you give me will help to beat Gavin Newsom and the California Democrats. I need your help. Think about this, 4.3 million votes for, for Jerry Brown, 4.4 for Donald Trump in California. There is only one candidate that is endorsed by the Californians for Trump. There is only one candidate that supported the Republican nominee for president. Why is this important? because Republicans have lost for decades in this state. Think about this. Republicans have lost every single year. Forget about that actor. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a Republican for all of about a year, right? He did those ballot initiatives. We saw him, he lost, and then he never came back. He went home, there was a Democrat waiting at home. He went to the office, there was a Democrat waiting in the office, and that was it. I mean, that was it. The problem is, is that Arnold the governor was not Arnold the actor. You see, Arnold, the, the actor, would have said, I'll be back, right? And then he would have come back and would have you know, cleaned house. But that's not what happened. Once he got beaten once, we never saw this guy again. Literally, just last week, Arnold Schwarzenegger said he wanted to bleed the Republican Party dry. Think about this. I'll tell you right now, I got a message for Arnold Schwarzenegger. You're not bleeding nothing, buddy. Republicans are back in California. So let me tell you guys, winning in California is something you're going to have to get used to. And the reason you're going to win is because there's more of us than there are of them. Why would you vote Democrat when Democrats have given you the highest in the nation poverty, out of control homelessness, crime that has risen by 15.4% violent crime over the last three years? The Democrats have ruined our states. We run on these roads in the worst traffic in the country, with the second worst roads in the nation. Our water system used to be the pride of the country. We're stuck in these droughts every decade now, and our water infrastructure is crumbling before our eyes. When those rains came, it burst Oroville Dam, and 180,000 Californians had to be evacuated because Jerry Brown and the California Democrats have ignored all of our infrastructure. Anybody here get stuck in traffic? There you go. Next time you're stuck in traffic, I want you to blame a Democrat. And here's why. For 39 of the last 40 years, they controlled the legislature. They could have fixed your roads anytime they wanted to. Instead, they did nothing while our state has been crumbling. When I get elected, I have a very simple five-point plan for California. Number one, and it's right there on the wall in case, you, in case you forget this. Should be in front of you too if we passed out our sheets. Number one, we will cut taxes in California. We start on day one with the repeal of the gas tax. We are going to cut the personal income tax. We're going to cut sales tax. Get rid of that gas tax increase. And yes, we're going to cut corporate tax in, in uh, California. This will be just like what Trump did in the White House, which created over $8 trillion of wealth in the last year alone. 
Think about this. Trump's tax cuts, because of those, it is the lowest unemployment on record for African Americans and for Latinos. The lowest unemployment since 2000. Jobless claims the lowest since I was born in 1973. Think about this. This is greatness. This is greatness for every single American family. Apple brings back $358 billion to the United States, creating over 30,000 new jobs. Home Depot starts giving all their employees $1,000 raises. It's about time we bring those tax cuts to California. It's about time they come over the Rockies. It's about time the governor of Texas is not coming to California. It's about time your governor of California is going to Texas and bringing those jobs back. We are going to cut your taxes, starting with the repeal of gas tax. I will call special elections again and again and again until we have cut your tax in California. We are going to cut these excessive regulations. I will get rid of agencies that are doing nothing for California, like the California Air Resources Board that exists to tax our companies. Are you with me? When I'm your governor, I'm going to hang a bright neon sign over the California State Capitol. And guys, it's going to read, Open for Business! So we're going to cut your taxes. That means people are going to have money in their pockets. Parents are going to be able to send their kids to the best schools, take care of their kids, have a great time, go to Mount Baldy, go skiing. This is what life's about, right? But you know what? what? What use is all this economic prosperity if you're not safe when you walk out your front door? You see, because of three laws of the California Democrats, AB 109, Prop 47, and Prop 57, violent crime has spiked by over 15.4% in the last three years alone. These three laws are early release of felons, felonies turning into misdemeanors. And think about this, just two weeks ago, a judge ruled that because of Proposition 57, over 10,000 sex offenders are gonna be released from jail early into our communities. I will tell you right now, as your governor, we are going to repeal these three laws. We are going to make California safe again. If you are a criminal and you do the crime, you will serve the time. If they tell us they don't got enough jail space, we'll build more. Punishment will be swift and sure in California, and you will be safe again. And by the way, there is a reason that I have an A and an A plus from the NRA and the Firearms Policy Coalition. It is because your Second Amendment is a right, not a privilege. Are you with me? this guys how long has it been in california since we actually heard somebody that was willing to say the truth that was willing to fight the democrats that was willing to go directly at them head on and not talk out of both sides of their mouth this is why republicans have lost for decades in california who was the last republican nominee for president or for, for governor in 2014 does anybody remember neil kashkari Neil Kashkari was famous for sleeping homeless for a week in Fresno. Literally, that was the best that we had. Neil Kashkari, do you know who he voted for? For, for uh, president in the previous presidential election? Anybody know? He voted for Barack Hussein Obama. Think about this. In 2010, the Republicans put up Meg Whitman. Who did Meg Whitman uh, support in the most recent presidential election? Anybody know? Crooked Hillary Clinton. How do you get Republicans in California to turn out for nominees for governor that won't even support their political party? This guy that's running against me in this race, John Cox, you might have heard of. He's from Chicago. He's only lived here as a resident since 2011. Who did he vote for in the most recent presidential election? He might have well been crooked Hillary Clinton. He voted for a guy called Gary Johnson. I will tell you, if you didn't vote for Trump, you voted for Hillary. Gary Johnson believes in open borders, legalized drugs, legalized prostitution. Is this what we want in California? That sounds a lot more like Gavin Newsom to me than Donald Trump. Think about this. It is about time we actually had somebody that represented California, that was born here, that was raised here, that understands the difficulties in our state and understands how to fix our state. For the last six years, I've been elected for you. I served the California State Assembly representing all our parts of 13 cities in Orange County, California. 
I have had to watch as California has been systematically destroyed by the California Democrats. I have a 100% vote record from every every group that you care about. The Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association, the California Taxpayer Association, the National Federation of Independent Business Owners. I have stood there and fought for you when no one else is fighting. But you know what? We can't change the state and the legislature because there's too many Democrats there. The only way we can change this, the only way we can cut your taxes and get tough on crime again in California is by electing a Republican governor. Who here is with me to have a Republican governor in the state of California? And what is your governor's name going to be in November of 2018? tough on crime and make our streets safe again. The Second Amendment is your right, not a privilege. It shall not be infringed. Just last month, I authored legislation that would allow anybody in California without a criminal record to automatically shall issue, get a CCW, to have the ability to protect yourself wherever you are, whether in your home or walking down any street anywhere in California. Think about this. Why should you not be able to protect yourself. In the county of Los Angeles, there are over 10 million residents. There are only 179 CCW permits issued. Which means, think about this, no, no, one's, no one has any protection whatsoever. Unless a police officer is standing right next to you, you have absolutely no protection. Raise your hand if you would feel safe walking downtown LA anytime past 11 o'clock at night by yourself. Think about this, guys. This is our state. It's about time that California is safe for every single Californian, anytime, day or night, whether you're young or old, rich or poor, regardless of the color of your skin, any city, any rural area, you have the right to be safe. This state belongs to you. Now, why won't you walk down downtown LA at night? Maybe you wouldn't walk down there because the city of Los Angeles has over 58,000 homeless people sleeping out on the streets every single night. Homelessness in California went up by 13.7% last year, and in Los Angeles, it went up by over 23%. Think about this, 23%. This is a crime. This is a crime against the people of our state that can no longer take care of themselves. California must reinstitute state facilities for those that cannot take care of themselves. We gotta put a roof over their head. We got to get them the substance abuse counseling they need, the mental health services they need. We got to get them back on their feet again. But I will tell you right now, they're no longer sleeping out on the streets. It's cold here. I mean, we can feel it, right? It's cold. It's not right. We will clean up the streets for their benefit and for our benefit. We are the citizens of California. It is our state. California will be clean again, and California will be safe again. Are you with me? So listen, we're going to cut your taxes. We're going to get tough on crime. We're going to clean up your streets. No longer will people be dying in the streets of San Diego of hepatitis. Think about this. No longer are we going to allow 22,000 intravenous drug users to litter the streets of San Francisco. No longer is downtown Los Angeles going to look like a third world war zone. Anybody here been down to 5th and Julian, 6th and Wall, downtown? It's, it's, I mean, it doesn't even look like the United States anymore. It's insane. This is no way for people to live. It's no way for us to treat the good people of our state. Think about this. We have cut your taxes. We have cleaned up your streets. But what's next? What does all that matter if every time you hop on the freeway, you can't go anywhere? Worst in the nation traffic, second worst in the nation roads. And why? Because the Democrats have not fixed them in decades. Republicans came up with a plan just two years ago, would have saved $7 billion off the state budget. $7 billion, not a dime in new taxes. And all of this money would have gone into your roads to fix the second worst in the nation roads and the worst in the nation traffic. The Democrats didn't like that plan. Instead, they wanted to charge you a $52 billion tax. Think about this tax. 12 cents per gallon of regular, 20 cents per gallon of diesel, and your car registration is going up from, from $25 all the way up to $175 extra every single year. Think about this. Anybody paying more at the pump these days? 
Anybody get a higher car registration yet? Just wait, they're coming. And all of this money, less than 35% will ever go to your roads. Not one penny will ever be able to be spent on any new free freeway lanes. The best you're gonna get is toll lanes, bus lanes, and bike lanes. I will tell you, we can do better in California. It's about time we expand our freeways, fix our roads, and get me and you out of traffic. Are you with me? Yeah. Guys, this is so simple. California is the greatest state in the nation. We got the best minds in the nation. We have the best technology in the nation. We got the best workforce in the nation. I will no longer listen to the excuses of the California Democrats that it can't be done in California. These next eight years will be the best eight years of your life. I guarantee you, because one man, one Republican is going to be governor of California this year. What is my name? I can't hear you. He will be your next governor. And when we're your governor, you know what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to take back California. Cut your taxes. Get tough on crime. Fix your roads. Fix our broken education system. Who here went to California public school? I did too. Used to be the best schools in the nation, right? Now our children are 46th and 47th in reading and math. Only 30% of our ninth graders are ever expected to finish a four-year college degree. Why? Our schools are failing. We have this common core nonsense. They're no longer being educated. I, well, let me back up for a quick second. In 2016, I got married. My parents never thought I was going to get married. My mom has been waiting for a very long time. But you see, the problem was, is they've been married for over 52 years, my folks, and they still love each other. It's the cutest thing in the world. We got any married couples here today? There we go. Anybody got a mother and a father? Come on now, let's hear it. So look, I waited until I found the best one. And this, this girl I married, she's incredible. And I'm a pretty good negotiator. So when we got married, I negotiated a nine-year-old daughter in the deal. And you better believe my nine-year-old daughter goes to California public schools. We got busy, and now I got a four-month-old baby girl. I've got two daughters in California, and I want them going to California public schools. Are you with me? Yeah. Gavin Newsom's got four kids. How many of Gavin Newsom's four children do you think go to California public schools? Right? It is one set of rules for the liberal elites one set of rules for them, and one set of rules for everybody else. Let me tell you something. Where is this state run out of? Anybody know? You better believe it's San Francisco. It is not Sacramento. An hour and a half west of Sacramento is where all the power in California is. Gavin Newsom, Jerry Brown, Nancy Pelosi, Boxer, Feinstein, Kamala Harris, every single one of them from the Bay Area of San Francisco. I will tell you right now, it's about time we take back California from San Francisco. Are you with me? Yeah. And when we do, and when we fix this broken education system, let me tell you what it's going to look like. We will give parents the right to send their kids to the very best schools, whether it's a California public school or a California public charter school. If you want to homeschool your kids in California, be my guest. If you are a local district, and you no longer want to teach this common core nonsense that is failing our children. Be my guest. But listen, every kid is going to be tested when they go into the grade. And they're going to be tested when they go out of the grade. No longer are fifth graders going to be stuck in the second grade reading level. I will tell you right now that when I am your governor, no more does every child get a trophy. You're going to have to earn your education in California. Now, does that mean a couple kids aren't going to advance on to the next grade? You better believe it does, because we want them to learn. That's why they're in school. This is not child daycare. This is our next generation. They deserve no less. Our education system must be for the benefit of our children first and foremost. All of these ridiculously highly paid bureaucrats, administrators, all of these terrible policies of the California Teachers Union, by the way, California Teachers Union, one of the most powerful unions in California, 
spent over $200 million on politics. 99% of their money went to one political party. Who do you think that was? The Democrats. But yet, all of this money they've gotten, our kids are being failed. I will tell you right now, this is our state. These are our children. It is about time that someone in California stands up for our next generation and demands that once again, we have the greatest education in the nation. Are you with me? We've cut your taxes. We're open for business. We've cut your crime. You're safe to walk in any street anywhere in California, day or night. You can get down the road because we're no longer stuck in the worst of the nation traffic. Our schools are once again great, so your kids are actually getting educated. Sorry, you might not get as many trophies, but you better believe they're going to earn every single one that they get. And what comes last, guys? What comes last? We're in Southern California, right? Yeah. We get these droughts all the time, right? Yeah. Because there's not enough water in California, oh, yeah, right? right. Yeah. No! There is plenty of water in California. Let me tell you something. California has more than enough water for this generation and every generation to come. All we got to do is store the water when it rains. Think about this. Over 50% of our water in California washes out into the Pacific Ocean, unused by anybody. Think about this. From 2014 to 2017, we were in a drought, right? Right? Everybody remember? Who here turns off your tap when you brush your teeth? I do, right? Remember, Jerry Brown told you to kill your front lawn. He told you don't wash your car. He said, take a shorter shower. I hope to God you still flush your toilet. Jerry Brown told you, if you see your neighbor washing his car on a Sunday afternoon, you call the water company and you get him a fine. You remember this? This is the problem. During that drought, one of the worst we ever had on record, we passed a water bond. It was $7 billion and I voted for it. Not one penny of this though, not one penny, was spent by the California Democrats to build any new water storage anywhere in the state of California. So when it finally rained in 2017, it burst Oroville Dam. 188,000 Californians had to be evacuated. And get this, here's the crime. Every drop of water you saved, every short shower that you took, every time you didn't wash your car and killed your front lawn, every drop of water that every Californian saved up and down the state washed out under the Golden Gate Bridge, not one time over, over 10 times over. Jerry Brown lied to every single Californian. I will tell you right now, it is about time we complete the California State Water Project. We build new water storage above ground, below ground, all through the state. So when it rains, we store our water. Are you with me? There are 12 water storage projects up and down the state of California. Jerry Brown's Water Commission just said that none of them pencil out and none of them should be built. This is insanity. We are not going to steal the water from the north. We are not going to drain the delta. Those delta tunnels, they're never getting built. We are going to build new water storage above ground and below ground. Sites Reservoir, Temperance Flats, Shasta Dam. We're going to do desalination at San Diego and Huntington Beach. I will tell you right now, you are taking long showers once again. You're going to have green lawns. We're going to flood the Central Valley with water. And let me tell you, you, you see your neighbor washing his car on a Sunday afternoon, you're going to smile at him and say, great job, thank you so much for keeping your car clean, because we got plenty of water in California. You know, lest I forget, in my very first budget as your next governor of California, we will defund the California high-speed rail. Return the money to you. And when I am your governor, if you don't have an ID, you are not going to vote. We will bring voter ID back to California. Guys, listen, I could go on and on and on, but you know what, if I do, it's going to start snowing here. This state is the greatest state in the nation. It's been run by the wrong political party for 39 of the last 40 years. For too long, we have listened to people tell us how to live our lives, how to educate our children, what we can do and what we cannot do. 
passing all of these crazy laws like transgender bathrooms where little boys and little girls are using the same bathroom. Like, like HIV transmission, transmitting AIDS to another person knowingly and willingly no longer is it a felony, now it's a slap on the wrist misdemeanor. Thanks to Gavin Newsom's Proposition 47, any personal drug use in California is now a misdemeanor. Thanks to Prop 47, any theft of $950 or less is like a traffic citation. Thieves are going into stores with calculators these days. If you walk the streets of San Francisco, it looks like there's diamonds on the sidewalk, but those aren't diamonds, those are all the smashed car windows. 31,000 break-ins last year alone, and less than 2% of these criminals were ever apprehended. It is about time we clean up our state. It is about time that the silent supermajority in California is silent no longer. We are California. We have been forgotten and left behind by the California Democrats, by the San Francisco Bay Area liberal elites. We have been told that we don't matter that they can take our money and our rights and our freedoms anytime they want. We have been told that we have to accept less, we have to accept scarcity, we have to accept traffic and homelessness and poverty. I will tell you right now, the silent supermajority in California will be silent no longer. The forgotten Californians will be forgotten no longer. And this year, ladies and gentlemen, one man, this year, one Republican will be your next governor. His name is Travis Allen, and that's me. And together, we will take back...